it was a busy day at brendam docks while cranky hoisted heavy cargo from the waiting ships thomas and percy shunted trucks but the two engines were having too much fun and weren't paying attention one truck bashed into percy's buffer and tipped over a crate fell out and split open revealing an amazing sight thomas look peep percy there's a metal man a robot silly tank engine grumbled cranky that's not a robot it's a suit of armour like a knight used to wear just then sir topham hat arrived crank is right said sir topham hat thomas and percy you must be more careful with your work this armour is very old and valuable long ago before there were railways the island of sodor was ruled by kings and the greatest king of sodor was the beloved king godred he protected the island from invaders with help of gallant knights he wore a golden crown the ruins of king godred's castle can still be found at olstead on the earl of sodor's estate sir topham hat continued and the king's golden crown was kept on display there for many years until it was stolen the thieves were caught but the crown was never seen again which reminds me we have a special visitor coming to sodor you must all get washed and look your best for his arrival the next day there was excitement all around the island the engines were given a good wash down and a polishing i heard spencer's coming from the mainland peeped emily i hope we're not all having a wash just for spencer puffed james no said sir topham hat spencer is bringing our visitor my old friend sir robert norrenby the earl of sodor is coming home to-day after travelling the world for many years later thomas and the other engines arrived at knapford station they all looked their best and gleamed in the sun the station was decorated with colourful banners and balloons spencer rolled up shining and proud a brass band played as the earl stepped out of his coach what a marvellous greeting the earl exclaimed sir topham hat cleared his throat and spoke we have gathered here to celebrate a, a celebration the earl interrupted how marvellous carry on i promised i'll be at this date by two enjoy your party with that he disappeared into his coach and spencer puffed away the next morning thomas delivered a crate to the earl's estate there he saw the earl looking at building plans for his big project he also met milly the earl's narrow gauge engine i run the estate railway for the earl milly peeped happily the earl eagerly opened the crate and removed the armour thomas had seen at the docks the earl was pleased but then he sighed if only i had the go king godred's golden crown then my plan would be complete the armour was loaded on to milly's trucks before thomas could ask about the missing crown or the earl's mysterious plan milly and the earl chugged away over the next few days thomas helped take more crates and supplies to the earl's estate there were so many deliveries of tools stones wood and rails that james and percy had to help Thomas's friend, Jack the Digger, was also working at the estate. I'm helping the Earl with his building project, puffed Jack. He's restoring Olstead Castle. So that's his plan, whistled Thomas. Thomas, Percy and James spent the day happily shunting containers until Thomas came upon a flatbed with a very large crate on it. The Earl said it was a special delivery for the steamworks percy peeped that he wanted to haul it but james thought an important package should be delivered by a fine engine like him if you're all so curious the earl said maybe you should all take it the engines were coupled to each other and they pulled the mysterious crate together hello my friends victor said when they arrived at the steamworks what is this thing in a crate that takes so many engines to deliver a gantry crane lifted the crate and revealed an old engine named stephen his wood was worn and he had rust holes in his boiler he hadn't turned his wheels in years surprise the old engine peeped stephen will be helping me with my project the earl explained 
Victor said he'd have Stephen fixed up in no time. As Victor and Stephen rolled away, Thomas asked the Earl what Stephen would be doing. I have a special job for him, but it's best not to say anything quite yet. OK, sir, peeped Thomas. I won't say anything. I promise. News of the mysterious old engine spread quickly. The next morning, many of the engines rolled down to the steamworks to see Stephen. He was suspended high in the air, hanging from a gantry crane. His wheels had been removed. What are you doing up there? asked Henry. They're turning me into an aeroplane. Stephen joked. Stephen is one of the first steam engines ever built, said Victor. I've been around a long time, Stephen said, laughing. I wasn't always this rusty. Back when trains were pulled by horses, Stephen continued. I worked in the mines and on the docks, and I was lightning fast. They called me the rocket. But you new engines are so fast and strong, I'm not needed any more. Percy asked if Stephen had ever seen knights in shining armour. Stephen laughed. I'm not that old. I never saw dinosaurs either. The other engines also laughed, and Stephen told Percy not to feel bad. Asking questions is always a good way to learn new things. Victor worked quickly. Soon Stephen's funnel was straightened and his boiler was fixed. With a fresh coat of paint, he was as good as new. You look really useful again, peeped Thomas. James and Percy tooted their horns. Just then Sir Topham Hatt arrived. James, Thomas and Percy, the Earl of Sodor, asked me if you could help with a special job. As Thomas rolled away to work, he noticed that Stephen looked sad. Suddenly an idea flew into Thomas's funnel. He thought it might be hard for Stephen to see the other engines being really useful. Thomas told Stephen that the Earl had a special job for him too. Thomas knew that he wasn't supposed to tell, but he wanted to cheer up his new friend. Stephen was very excited and wondered what his job could be. Thomas, James and Percy steamed up to the Earl's estate. It looked very different. Rocks and dirt had been removed and Olstead Castle now towered over the land. The Earl has done so much work, peeped Thomas. What about me? Jack asked as he dumped a load of dirt and rocks into a troublesome truck. I've done lots of work too. James's face fell. I hope the Earl doesn't want us to cart away this dirt. That wouldn't be a very special job. The Earl led the engines inside the castle wars, where they were amazed to see a giant platform on rails. The Earl called it the Traveller. The men will work on top of the Traveller and replace the roof beams, the Earl explained. And you three engines will move the Traveller into place for each beam. You'll have to work carefully to keep the platform stable. We'll do our best, peeped Thomas. Thomas, Percy and James had never done a job like this. The platform was very tall and a little scary. The three engines carefully pushed and pulled together. James inched ahead. Then Percy nudged the traveller a little too hard. It wobbled. Easy, Percy, puffed James, and pay attention. You both have to pay attention, peeped Thomas as he lurched forward, not realising that James and Percy weren't moving with him. The traveller shook. Then a giant roof beam thundered to the ground. Dust covered everyone. Is everyone all right? asked the Earl. I'm not, James shouted. My paintwork is covered with dust. They all laughed. Thomas, James and Percy promised to be more careful, and Jack was happy to carry away the fallen rocks. Meanwhile, Stephen was eager to learn what his special job would be. Victor didn't know, so Stephen rolled down to Brendam Docks. It was very noisy there. Out of my way, little Steamy, said Diesel. We have work to do. There's no work here for an old engine like you, Cranky said. Stephen puffed sadly away from the docks. Stephen wound his way up to the Blue Mountain Quarry. It was bigger and busier than any quarry he'd worked in before. I'm looking for my new job, Stephen said to a narrow-gauge engine named Luke. We can always use help, Luke peeped. But each truck Stephen tried to pull was just too heavy. 
He steamed and strained, but none would move. Scarloe frowned. I don't think there is a job for you here, Stephen. When I worked in a mine, the trucks weren't this heavy, said Stephen. Are there any mines around here? Scarloe thought for a moment. There is an old mine near the castle ruins. But I don't think anyone works there right now. I'm on a quest like the knights in the olden times, thought Stephen as he pulled away to search for the mine. Stephen puffed to a slope below the castle grounds and rolled through some overgrown grass. He found the entrance to the mine, but it was boarded up. No one had worked there in years. The other engines are right, he sighed. I'm too slow, old and weak. There's no job on this island for me. Meanwhile, at the top of the same slope, Thomas prepared to haul away dirt in the troublesome trucks. Suddenly, the trucks slipped loose and roared down the hill. Thomas didn't know it, but they were headed right towards Stephen. Stephen had no choice but to push into the abandoned mine. His funnel struck the roof, and rocks crashed down behind him, sealing up the entrance. Thomas retrieved the trucks, not knowing that Stephen was trapped in the mine. Olstead Castle's grand reopening was just a day away, and the island of Sodor was buzzing with excitement. Visitors hurried from the mainland to be part of the festivities. Two special engines named Connor and Caitlin were brought over to help carry the extra passengers. With all the activity, only Thomas noticed that Stephen was missing. Thomas went to the steamworks to ask about Stephen, and Victor told him Stephen had left the day before to find his new job. But he didn't know what his new job was, Thomas peeped. He felt responsible. If he hadn't mentioned the job, Stephen wouldn't be missing. Thomas steamed to the sheds and chugged to the shunting yard. He rolled down to the docks and up to the quarry. There was no sign of Stephen. While Thomas raced around the island, Stephen was still in the mine, searching for a way out. He crept around dark bends and through empty tunnels, but the tracks just led him in circles. The only thing he found was an old wooden crate. Stephen's lamp was flickering and his boiler was almost dry. He couldn't turn his wheels another inch. Thomas returned to the sheds and asked the other engines to help. Let's get those boilers bubbling and find our friend, he puffed. Sir Topham Hat protested. I have a railway to run. Just then the Earl drove up in a panic. I need Stephen for the opening of Olstead Castle tomorrow. Sir Topham Hatt agreed to let Thomas and Percy search for Stephen, and they quickly chugged off. Thomas and Percy searched every yard, station and tunnel. Thomas was about to give up when Percy saw an overgrown track at the bottom of a hill near Olstead Castle. Maybe we should check down there, he peeped. He's not there, Thomas replied. That's the track to the old mine. We went down there when the troublesome trucks ran away. But Thomas looked anyway. He saw something familiar lying on the ground. It was Stephen's funnel. As quickly as his pistons could pump, Thomas chuffed up to the castle to get Jack the digger. When they returned, Jack started hauling rocks away from the mine entrance. As soon as it was clear, Thomas turned on his lamp and raced into the dark mine. The old track creaked under his weight. Stephen! Stephen! he peeped. Stephen heard Thomas coming his way. He wanted to call out, but he was too weak. He had no steam. He couldn't move, or even whistle. Suddenly Thomas turned a corner, and the beam from his lamp revealed a wonderful sight. Stephen! Thomas peeped. I've come to get you out of here. Really? Stephen said, trying to sound cheerful. I was thinking of taking up mining again. Thomas was coupled to Stephen and carefully pushed him out of the dark mine. Percy and Jack were relieved to see that Stephen was safe. Even the Earl was there. Oh, sir, said Stephen, I found something in the mine that might be interesting to you. There's a big wooden chest. Wonderful, the Earl exclaimed. But the first, we must get you ready for tomorrow. You are a very important engine with a very special job to do. The Earl went into the mine to find the crate, and Stephen was quickly shunted to the steamworks for repairs. The next day, an excited crowd gathered around Olstead Castle. Percy was thrilled to see that the metal man was also there, and moving. 
He cranked up to the podium and lifted his mask. It was the Earl. Ladies and gentlemen, engines and coaches, welcome to Ofsted Castle. There is still work to do, but we'll soon restore King Godric's castle to its former glory. Now, let me introduce you to my special steam engine, Stephen. He and Millie will be more than happy to show you around the grounds. Stephen rolled into view. His new funnel glittered like gold. It reminded Thomas of something. But what? Most importantly, the Earl said, Stephen has found something that I thought was lost forever. The Earl opened the old chest that Stephen had found in the mine. Inside was a golden crown. King Godred's long-lost crown. He announced. The crowd gasped. It will be returned to the castle and kept on display for all to see. Then Thomas realised what Stephen's funnel looked like. A crown! He blew his whistle. The other engines joined in and cheered for Stephen. He wasn't the fastest or the strongest, but he was really useful. And today, he was a king. <laughs>